During this past week, Rocket Lab launched their 46th Electron mission, as well as had their CFO Adam Spice sit down with Roth MKM to discuss the outlook for the company. In this video, let's extract the details that we can from these two events to paint a picture for what is the future of the company. My name is Scott, welcome to the channel, let's talk Rocket Lab. So starting with the launch, in the early hours of March 21st, Rocket Lab flew their first NRO launch from Wallops, Virginia, being their fifth NRO launch overall. This also marks Rocket Lab's fourth mission from Wallops, Virginia, internally known as Launch Complex 2. With this mission under the belt, let's take a look ahead at what comes next. During Tuesday's conference, Adam Spice gave some clarity regarding the electron count not just for this year, but for next year as well. Let's take a listen. When we're launching one a month, which has kind of been the rate that we were at last year, you know, you kind of get into the, I would say, mid-20s kind of non-gap gross margin on that and kind of treading neutrality when it comes to contribution margin. But as you step up to the cadence we have this year, which is, you know, 22 launches, next year add a few more launches on top of that, we really start to increment towards our long-term target model of roughly 50 points of non-gap gross margin and then kind of mid-20s kind of uh, contribution margin from that line of business. So since the last Rocket Lab update on this channel, the two NASA pre-fire missions have been bumped out of May to an indefinite time frame. So there will be a bit of uncertainty regarding how many launches are going to end up being in Q2 with those two pre-fire missions being bumped out. But of course, that's not going to stop us from making any sort of assumptions. Let's hop over to the launch tracker. So if we just scroll down to the current date, you can see that in June, we have Hawkeye and Kinesis as potential, potential launch customers. We also have the NASA cased rideshare mission set for Q2. Past that, we have a number of missions that have not necessarily had a launch date attached. So as you'll see, a lot of them are just, have just been listed for 2024. So we've got a couple for Capella. I think that's another safe one to, to squeeze in through a potential Q2 launch. We also have Synspective, we've got Black Sky, and then the Lidos and Haste ones, I believe those are going to be later in the year. I think those are the second half of the year. Nothing's been stated explicitly, so I'm not too sure. And I mean, even the NASA pre-fire missions, they were moved out of May, but I'm not sure. Is it like a, a one-month delay, two-month delay? Is it like, are they not even happening this year anymore? Time will tell. All in all, there are still 22 Electron launches planned for 2024, with a few more expected for 2025. Also notable is that we have the Neutron included in the launch manifest as guided from Peter Beck during the most recent earnings call late last month. Speaking of the Neutron, it seems like we have an update in the time frame regarding the Archimedes test fire. Let's take a listen. Propulsion is the trickiest and longest uh, pole in the tent. And that one, you know, we'll have the engine on the stand here in the April, May time frame. And that'll really kind of let us know where we're at, right? Because I think everything is going according to, to plan to get to us to a launch by the end of the year. Uh, but propulsion really will be the gating item if, if there is one. So not only did we get an update in the time frame for Archimedes, but we also got an update for Firefly's upcoming engine and Relativity's upcoming engine. Firefly's Miranda engine will be used on Firefly's joint project with Northrop Grumman, the MLV rocket, as well as Northrop's own Antares rocket, both expected to launch in 2025. Relativity's Aeon R engine is being tested to be launched on the Terran R expected for 2026. Now, what I find interesting about this is you have Firefly expecting to launch in 2025 and Relativity expecting to launch in 2026, and they're both doing their test campaigns for their engines now. I mean, past tense, I guess. They have done some of their engine tests, at, at least some of them, right? And then you have Rocket Lab expecting to not do their test campaign for a couple months and still be launching within nine months, I guess that would be. Cautiously optimistic. That's all I can really say. Next up, we'll put a couple of the clips together from the same conference that outlines new information regarding the acquisitions and space applications. Take a listen. Yeah, so, I mean, our, our, our deals have typically been key capabilities or subsystems on the satellite bus. And I think we've largely fleshed that out. Um, there are a couple things within that, within that satellite bus architecture that we could further vertically integrate into. Uh, there's always different forms of propulsion, chemical, electrical. Um, there's different flavors of radios. There's incremental capabilities around structures like tanks. 
and so forth. So in some cases, it'll be because they represent really good growth opportunities in and of themselves in a growing market. Uh, in some cases, it'll be the fact that we just want to de-risk our programs because there's certain things that aren't necessarily great growth drivers, but they really kind of um, de-risk execution on these larger multi-hundred million dollar programs. So it'll be a combination of those kind of things. Plus, we're starting to work our way towards kind of payload capabilities. That's the one thing that we, we've got great bus capabilities. Right now, we have to rely on third parties for payload. So you'll probably start to see us doing things that will position us to have more capabilities on payload hardware. And, you know, payloads are all very application specific. So you can think of like, you know, Earth observation, whether it's like SAR, synthetic after radar, or whether it's optics, or whether it's things like creating comms capabilities, right? So there's, there's fundamental, you know, kind of subsystems or building block capabilities that you need, and you'll start to see us pick those up. And those will provide a little bit of breadcrumbing towards the ultimate end applications that we're going to service. Because again, we only kind of are doing things that ultimately prepare us longer term to own those assets in orbit. Now, the, the broadband from space application that SpaceX targeted with Starlink, that's probably not what we'd be going for, just given the amount of capital required. And we have different access to capital, obviously, than, than, uh, than SpaceX does. But there's lots of very interesting um, applications that you know, require dozens or hundreds of satellites, not 40,000 satellites. So taking these comments and putting them all together, it seems like we can rule out broadband from space entirely. Maybe not in the long term, but I mean, in the medium and short term, it seems almost explicitly stated here that they will not be a competitor to SpaceX. So we're probably looking more towards uh, Earth observation, communications, and yes, count space-based solar. So to wrap the video up, I put together a list of catalysts of what to expect from now till the end of the year. I think in April, May, we're going to see this Archimedes test campaign. This is going to give us an outline of what to expect for Neutron going forward throughout the rest of the year. In May, we're going to get the Q1 earnings. This will be the first quarter that is being reported that uh, Electron has seen more than three launches. Now, if you zoom back to Q2 and Q3 of last year, those had three launches and those were margin positive. And I think it's going to be notably better than what we saw in those two quarters. We call it 25% average. I think we're gonna exceed 30% for this upcoming quarter. That's what the numbers are telling me anyways. Um, if you're interested in looking at the spreadsheet, the link to the Patreon is in the, the description below. For Q2 and Q3, I'm expecting to hear some news about not just Neutron contracts, but I'm expecting that Rocket Lab finally unveils this Reaction Wheel customer and we'll also get a glimpse as if it is just the Reaction Wheels that they're, they're providing for this customer, or maybe it's something much larger. I'll be happy either way. Um, throughout the rest of the year, I don't really have a time frame attached. We'll call it second half of the year. Expecting to see some acquisitions, one for sure, maybe maybe a couple, maybe even a few. I mean, there's a lot that was mentioned. And keep in mind, I mentioned this previously as well. Whatever is announced, if it isn't um, satellite bus related, this is going to be basically like, this is what to expect from Rocket Lab's space application. Finally, in December, fingers crossed for Neutron's first flight. If I missed anything on this list, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Aside from that, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. What the fuck is that? What is this? What is it? <laughs> also, in, also in the comments, if you can tell me why QuickTime does that, is it like, is that an audio cue? Sometimes it gives me like a, a like a big thumbs up and a thought bubble. I, I don't understand what it does and I can't, I don't know what triggers it. Anyway, wrapping up. See you guys in the next one. Have an awesome day. Peace.